is always interesting and uh, interesting to see and understand the various imageries presented in the holy bible while studying the third chapter of first corinthians i came across three interesting imageries presented consecutively by the apostle paul for instance verses 1 to 4 there we see an imagery of a family where a child is born i would like to call the family of god verses 5 to 9 we see an imagery of a farm which i would like to call the farm of god and verses 9 onwards we see another imagery the imagery of a building i would like to call the building of god Today morning, as we move forward with our sermon series on First Corinthians, my attempt is to draw your attention towards the first of these three imageries seen in First Corinthians chapter three. For our short time meditation, shall we turn to the first four verses of the third chapter of First Corinthians? First Corinthians chapter three, verses one to four. Let me read for you. And so, brothers and sisters. I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready. For you are still of the flesh, for as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, and you are not of the flesh, and behaving according to human inclinations, for when one says they belong to Paul and another belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? As I previously said, the first imagery that we see in this passage is of the family of God where a child is born. We can infer from this passage what the Apostle Paul was talking about. He was talking about rebirth. We call ourselves as born-again Christians. Being born again is something important and foundational in our Christian teachings. We remember Jesus who met an old man called Nicodemus who came to Jesus one evening with some questions. And Jesus told him, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless is born again. What exactly does it mean to have a rebirth? Bible pro pro portrays the humanity under two categories. For if, if, if you look at the first uh, few chapters of Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says about two, ki two kinds of people or two categories of people, the spiritual and the natural. We all are either in one of these categories. I can explain it with the aspect of rebirth. What does it mean to born again? We all are human beings with three components. Body, soul, and spirit. We know what the body is. When God created Adam, he made him with dust. A body, an image was made. Yes, that is the body, the flesh. Now, what did God do? He breathed into his nostrils. The life was given or the spirit was given. Now, the, the components, body is there, spirit is there. When the body received the spirit, there came a third aspect called soul. Three components are there. Soul, the Greek word or the root word is suke. That's the root word of the, word, of the term psychology, the science psychology. Psychology deals with the mental aspects of a human being. Yes, the soul is all about the mindset and the mental capacities and the mental functioning and behaviors. Yes, we have soul we have spirit, we have body. Now, I said previously, two categories of people, natural and spiritual. 
the peculiarity of the natural man is that he is controlled by the soul the word natural in greek is psyche cause again the same root word psychology the, the, the same root word psyche which is used in psychology as a natural man is controlled by the soul and a spiritual man is controlled by the spirit when adam committed sin a death happened the spiritual component of his spiritual life or the spiritual component of his life got dead and now he is a dead person and all his descendants are spiritually dead and when a person accepts christ into his life a life generates that is called a rebirth the apostle says or the bible says when the word of god comes to a person when he or she accepts the word of god when a person accepts christ as a personal savior the spiritual side or the spiritual component of the spirit gets life and he became born again we are connected back to god now as a born again christian you and i are part of god's family we are born into the family of god and now there's a challenge before us the challenge before us is to grow we need to grow to the level of spiritual maturity it's a lifelong process second peter 1 5 to 7 speaking of speaking to the new christians the apostle peter says make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and knowledge self control and to self control perseverance and perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and brotherly kindness love add on and on so that you and i be able to present ourselves as spiritually matured people it is not the river that is ultimate but a growth that leads to spiritual maturity what happens to the church in corinth paul went to corinth around ad 50 and there he stayed for 18 months and after several years he is getting a news from that church that these people are still remaining in their infancy unfortunately they didn't grow that's what we see in this passage selected for the day with this understanding look at this passage verse 1 it says and so brothers and sisters i could not speak to you as spiritual people but rather as people of the flesh as infants in christ verse 2 i fed you with milk not solid food for you are not ready for solid food even now still you are not ready in verse 3 you have quarreling you have envy you have jealousy you have all kinds of human inclinations but he is saying you are not grown i cannot speak to you as spiritual people you are still infants how to talk to you like infants they have not grown up and matured in a normal and a natural way they are supposed to grow but they didn't grow the milk intake has no effect on them now we have another little baby in our church if you ask the parents all, all of us know a baby a little infant he or she drinks milk when a child is born the digestive system is such that the milk is the only thing that they can handle and as they continue to drink they grow milk is a great start but it cannot be a diet forever if you want i see a child of one year continuing only in milk we wonder why if we see a child of two or three or four years drinking only milk yeah we will think there's some problem with this baby that's the same thing happened to the corinthian church if a parent you and i are in that situation of us that of a parent of a child who drinks only milk at the age of 5 or 6 or 10 a parent's mindset will be really frustrating he or she will be really sad that is the same mentality in which this apostle was writing to these people i see you guys drinking only milk even after all these years and all these months of christian life 
There is no growth happening to you. Paul expected a spiritual growth with these people, but he couldn't find that. Paul came to understand that the milk that they received in the previous days and weeks and years didn't make much effect in their bodies. The milk intake should have made them spiritually grow, but they remain still as newborn babies with their spiritualities. They are still drinking milk. The, good, the godliness of living is not seen in their life. The effect of the word of God is not seen in their life. The character formation is not seen in their life. Spiritual maturity is not seen in their life. They still remain immature. They remain childish instead of being spiritual. Personally, friends, the milk intake doesn't have any effect on you. You behave according to human inclination. They were continuing in their deeds as that of worldly people. They had jealousy and quarrel. They looked at another person's status and situation instead of being happy that God has blessed others. Rather, they start sitting there and blaming them. They were discontent with the blessings that others are receiving. They were totally dissatisfied in life because of their envy. Along with envy, they had strife. Strife is defined as a fighting or arguing. Now, if you are envious at someone, surely there are chances that strife can happen. The Corinthian strife it went to that extent where each other or the believers take others to the court. They could not settle the disputes within themselves, so they turned to non-believers to do it for them. Again, they had envy, they had strife, they had divisions. That's defined in verse 4. People were championing under, or people were arraying under the apostles like Paul, Peter, Apollos. They were dividing themselves and actually becoming hostile toward one another based on their teachers. Paul found them acting like unbelievers in their speech and deeds. There had been ample time for spiritual attitudes and actions to develop. But now, these Christians remain as infants. They live according to human inclination. The question is, what happened to these believers in Corinth? Understand this, they are born again. They understood the word of God. They have heard from all the preachers. They remained in their church. What happened to them? Why they didn't grow? Let me tell you, they choose not to grow. It's our choice whether if you and I should grow in our Christian life. Look at a new Christian. A Christian, or you can think about our past when we accepted Christ as our Savior. What an enthusiasm you and I had at that time. A new Christian. He is so enthusiastic about God. He is so enthusiastic about the word of God. He is so enthusiastic about the meetings and all kinds of things. If you look at a church with new Christians, new believers, we often find them fired up who are willing to work for the Lord to bring new people to the church. They have a hunger for the word of God. Yes, that intense desire is in the life of any Christian when they are becoming a new believer. That enthusiasm was there in the Corinthian Christians also. But as the time went on, that, pa that passion started calming down. They didn't go according to that direction that the Spirit of God has given them. 
they didn't obey the directions that they received now that passion went down they couldn't accept the word now they don't have any hunger for the word they don't have any interest in the meetings they don't have any interest in worship it's all going down because they choose not to grow what happened to the corinthian christians they choose not to grow they started serving two masters in reality they were carnal christians carnal means led by the flesh they obeyed the flesh rather than obeying god many a time we are like this we try to obey god at the same time we try to obey world matthew chapter 6 verse 24 No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other two masters were controlling them two masters were controlling them the flesh was trying to control spirit of god was prompting them to do certain things they obeyed the flesh the thinking and actions of a carnal christian is always prompted by flesh conversely the spiritual christian is the saint whose attitude thinking and actions are due to the prompting of the holy spirit what happened to the corinthian christians they preferred not to grow they started serving two masters they thought themselves are spiritual the corinthian believers had heard from the apostle paul they always listened to the eloquent preaching of apollos they have heard the first hand stories from the apostle peter they knew a lot from the word of god along with that the corinthian church was a gift church with all kinds of spiritual gifts If we look at chapters 8 chapters 12 we see the church as a gifted one they had the gift of prophecy they have faith as that of removing mountains they had the knowledge as things that they were pressing in on yes they thought themselves as spiritual they know the word they have all the gifts they are delighted in the gifts they consider themselves as spiritual many time we are like this we also look at ourselves in a high level than others we knew the bible far better than many other christians in the world we have the gifts of the holy spirit but today morning the word of god is still not the knowledge of the word or is not the gifts that we possess the obedience to the word of god that is matters god is more interested in attitudes and actions god is more interested in the obedience of his children what happened to the corinthian christians they thought themselves as spiritual and ignored the commandments of god what happened to them they started exalting human beings as i previously said They started rallying under the preachers like Apollos, Paul and Peter. They were dividing themselves and actually becoming hostile towards one another based on the teacher or the teachings that they had. Many a time we also think in human terms. We sometimes remain loyal to human beings way above than the loyalty that you and I are supposed to show towards God. It is true that God has sent certain people in your life at certain moments of your life as a blessing to you but it doesn't mean that they should be placed in a position above God Today morning the word of God is teaching us is not human beings who are to be exalted but Christ need to be exalted In actuality the Corinthian Christian has forgotten the fact that they have to work for the Lord in unity They are supposed to work for the common good of the church rather than their personal achievements but they were not looking to the collective good but they looked to their personal cause today morning let me conclude my sermon here 
I was born and raised in a conservative Pentecostal family. Though we don't have any written, lo written laws or rules at house, there were some unwritten rules that I was supposed to obey. Wherever I go, I should reach home before evening. I should let my parents know if I'm coming late. I should not involve in any extracurricular activities while I'm studying in school and college. I should not keep with me certain, more than certain amount of money in my wallet. I should not miss any Sunday service or Sunday school. A lot of rules which are unwritten were in our family. That is true with the God's family. There are a lot of written rules that you and I are supposed to obey in the family of God. We should have an earnest desire to grow to spiritual maturity since we belong to the family of God. Since we belong to the family of God, we always should yield to the prompting of the Spirit of God. Since we belong to the family of God, never forget to put to practice the word of God that we learned. Since we belong to the family of God, always be conscious to exalt God, our Father. Shall we close our eyes for